Hello and uh, welcome to Cheshire Audio. Um, I've just noticed I've got the camera at a really weird angle. Look at this, look a bit strange. Um, this is number three of the Favourite Albums series. Um, I suppose this more, com comes more into the category of Favourite Demonstration Albums, I suppose. A bit like the, the Joe Jackson. Um, this is a kind of a similar thing, really. Um, and over the years, I mean, I, Favourite Albums sort of come from various places and there's things that I've sort of bought at random years and years ago, second hand, that have become favourites and you or things that I didn't really like that much when I bought them and they've grown on me. There's quite a few albums I've got that have sort of been introduced to me by customers so in demonstrations. And obviously I did the, I did the video of uh, things I can't listen to anymore because I hear them so often, but occasionally absolute gems turn up in demonstrations. Um, and this is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, I had a customer, and it's a bit of a sad, it is a sad story actually in a lot of respects. Um, I had a customer called Clint. Um, who was a very good photographer, actually, but he'd suffered with esophageal cancer. Um, and he hadn't been able to work, he was self-employed, he couldn't work. And very, very into his hi-fi, very into his music, uh, in a, well, music in a, in a big way, actually, in a very similar sort of, very similar sort of um, choice in music to me, actually. His, his record collection almost mirrored my own, uh, which is interesting. But he used to come up, regularly for demonstrations, you know, you listen to all sorts of stuff. And he had, a, a, I think, a rig of playing a turntable, subbed an amplifier, and some neat SX3s. And he wanted to improve his record player. Obviously he was ill, wasn't earning. Um, and then he, after a while he came through all his chemo and he got he, he got the old clear. And uh, it was sort of great, you know, sort of excitement, I'm going to be earning again now, I'm going to get, to, going to get myself a better record player. And he used to come up to the shop. I put a picture actually um, up of, of Clint in a demonstration room. He used to come regularly, listening to all sorts of combinations of record player, arm cartridge, whatever. And uh, he settled on uh, a Nottingham analog hi hyperspace. And this, this was his dream turntable, suited his system brilliantly. This is what he was going to buy. Um, and he's, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm working again now. I can get back out because he, he was a, did a lot of sports photography, did all the big matches. And uh, I'm going to get back out working again, I'm going to start getting my money together and I'll, this is what I'm going to buy. And um, it was on those demonstrations that he introduced me to, um, oh, pronunciation is a difficult one here, Melanie de Biasio, Biasio. Melanie de Biasio, which I'll show you here. Weirdly, when I bought this, I, I bought it on CD, I still don't quite understand, I don't quite understand why I did. Um, the vinyl version of this is a lot, lot better. Um, it's an interesting one. It's quite a difficult album to categorise, but it's a bit like the Joe Jackson that is a very spacious recording. It's a very simply done. It's vocal, a bit of sort of brushwork on on cymbals, a bit of bass drum, a bit of bass guitar. Um, it's a bit sort of free forming. Um, it almost you could almost say it's jazz, but then again, it's almost not really. And I'm just reading the um, reading the notes inside. This is the album is called No Deal. Um, no Deal is like an excursion into the exotic. <laughs> Classes would be good at this situation. Hang on, sir. No Deal is like an excursion into exotic, uncharted territory, dangerous, but with the promise of rich re reward. De Biasio has a warm, dark, sultry voice. Yeah, that's true. Um, and a style that is hard to pinpoint. That's true as well. One which blends the rhythmic incantatory feeling of Nina Simone, yeah, true enough. Uh, some some sexy sh shades of Sade. I don't see, sh I don't, I don't hear Sade in this, but um, we'll pass over on that one. And even echoes of the Velvet Underground. Now, actually, I can sort of see that. The only thing I'd say is, it she doesn't sound anything like Nico uh, at any stretch of the imagination. Kind of reminds me a lot of um, if you if if. if Peggy Lee did some sort of slower, more jazzy, you know, laid back stuff. Then that's what this is. It's, her voice is very, very like Peggy Lee. Um, but yeah, it's one of those albums. It's sort of late night, very sort of slow and, but fantastic acoustic, really fantastic acoustic. So I really, yeah, thanks to Clint for that. Um, I mean, furthering the story with Clint, um, after being given the old clear, saving up for his deck, um, he missed one of his, he came for a demonstration, missed it, he said he hadn't, hadn't been feeling very well. Um, and 
then I heard because of the, the little, little group of guys who kind of knew Clint and sort of one a couple of guys who worked with him. And one guy said he's not he's not well. He's, he's um, they found more cancer, and he did continue to come in, but he started it from from being very very thin and then putting weight back on as he got recovered, and he started to, he was starting to lose weight again, and they'd found the cancer all over him. Um, so he came in one day to me and he said, "I really want this nothing." And he said, "What well, I've decided to do." Um, oh, he's in, had a car crash as well, just amongst all this going on. Um, I said, what I'm going to do, I said, I'm cashing in my pension, uh, I'm, I'm having it. And uh, yeah, he had, a, he had his nothing in my piss base with a Riga arm on it uh, um, and a Nagoka MP500, which was something else, and uh, took it around to his house. It sounded amazing. I mean, he was so happy with it. And it's just like, this is it. This is my final hurrah sort of thing. He had his, got his music out and his system sounded phenomenal. It was such a good little, it was a tiny little room it was in. Absolutely over the moon with it um, and he had it for three four months I think something like that but yeah I don't know I still, I still get quite emotional about Clint actually because he was such a lovely guy and you sort of think well I, you know but anyway but yeah legacy left with in, in, the, in the demonstration room Melanie oh, I'm gonna go again Melanie de Biasio yeah, it's, that is a superb album um, quite often I've it just played in the shop in the background um, Played it to a customer once, he said, well, that's a bit miserable, isn't it? I can, I can sort of see that, I and mean, I must admit, the, the, the guy involved never likes anything I play him. I think even even things that I choose that I think, oh, you'll like this because you played something similar to me. Uh, I think I, I think he's just, a, he's just that way up. I think he's one of these people who just likes to not like things. Um, but yeah, that's, that's he's the only person I've ever come across who, who didn't really think this was amazing. So, recommended. Melanie DiBiasio, got it this time, no deal. I'll put a little note along the bottom just to just so we get the spelling right. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, I think we're up to 4,300 subscribers at the moment. Um, yeah, I'll see you in a future video. Thank you very much.